Hi, this is Chris from codereview.co.uk and in this video we're going to be looking at Composer and the require and require dev elements of Composer. So this is a brand new Symphony 2.5 install. You can see there compo um, in our Composer it's specified as 2.5. It's literally just freshly downloaded and straight away we've got this require block which is pre-populated and a require dev block which is also pre-populated. So all the stuff that's in require is going to be required for us to go into production and all the stuff that's in require dash dev is stuff that we only require when we're in development pretty straightforward so far so what i found when i'm out and about with clients and and whatnot i find that th most people seem to put everything into require and there's there's a good reason for that really the main thing is when you're first starting out with symphony it tells you, like as part of the installation process, you're told to use Composer to install Symphony, and it it talks you through how to do it. it. It's really straightforward, honestly, as I'm sure you're aware. And then once you've done that, you you kind of learn about Composer install, Composer update, and Packagist to get you know other other dependencies that you're going to want. Once you've got that information, you're kind of like, well, you know, I, I already know enough about Composer that I don't really need to know more. And there's a hell of a lot to learn with Symphony uh, as it is. So, you know, it's one extra thing to add to your learning curve, which is already pretty steep. And so most people, as, as I found out, just sort of take that little bit of knowledge that they've got and run with it. And it, that, that can be, you know, it's good. It's good that you can get away with that. But at the same time, there is other, other stuff to know. And like, most people, as I say, skip this bit. So, and I'll, I'll admit to the fact that I was guilty of this for a very long time as well. So what the require dev section is, is for is for stuff that, as I've mentioned, we only really require into our development process. By default, you get the Sensio generator bundle. And straight away, I want to show you that in our vendors folder, Sensio LSLA, we can see that we've got this generator bundle. So if we just go back and, you know, real world example, you would probably go across to packages, you'd probably put in something like Codeception and you'd use this for your test environment, um, you know, doing your test driven development. So really, you're not going to need that in production. You only want to be doing this. You only want this as a dependency when you're in your require dev environment. So that's where you put it really. You don't want to be putting it in your require because when you go into production, you shouldn't need your, your test driven development stuff there. So, you know, it's one extra thing to worry about, one extra thing to conflict, etc. And sometimes you can be in situations where the environment is quite restrictive, especially if it's an existing project that you've, you know, maybe you've just joined a team or maybe you've been called in on a consultancy project or, or similar. And you can find yourself in a situation where the, re the requirements are quite restrictive and you don't want to be messing with anything in prod. So you just stick stick to dev and, you know, that's where you can put your stuff without really causing anyone else any problems certainly not affecting production but what we'll see is there's an actual there's an error at the moment that we'll get anyway um, regardless i'll come to that in a sec though so we've we've stuck that in and if we do by default we're just going to do a composer update and you'll see it says update dependencies including require dev now i'm just going to cancel that because i don't actually want to bother downloading code section you know there's no no purpose to it for this but it says we've, we've done composer update. It's in updating our dependencies, including everything in require dev. So it's going to go off. It's going to pull in code section. Now that is the default behavior for composer. If we go into documentation and we go into command line interface, and then we go into update, you can see there's some options here and these are all prefixed with dash dash, even though it just looks like a dash single dash. It's, it's dash dash, whatever. And then, so you can see here dash dash dev, and it says install packages listed in require dev. This is default behavior. So what this is saying to us is by default, it's going to run composer update with require dev, even though we don't need to type it. But when we're going to production, we probably want to have our script set up. So it says composer update or composer install dash dash no dash dev, because we don't want to install the stuff that's in, in our dev environment, require dev environment. However, if we do this, Let's just give it a whirl. Composer update dash dash no dash dev. So this is you know an example of going into production, and you can see straight away that slight difference. Update dependencies. It's not got this including required dev section in here. But what this is going to do is it's going to go off and remove anything that's in our required dev section. Actually, physically remove it from from the server. So it, 
in this case it's going to actually remove the generator bundle um, which then causes this error uh, and I, I think I, I can't work this out honestly whether this is something I'm doing or I've seen this many times since I've started using required dev I th I'm pretty sure this is a problem with Symfony honestly um, I can't find anything about this on, on Google or, or anywhere uh, but what this is basically saying is we've removed the generator bundle. So if we go into vendor Sensio LSLA and we can see that that folder has been physically removed. However, at the end of running this composer update, it will try and clear the cache as it's saying here as error occurred when we run the cache clear. So if we do ph, we'll get out of that directory because that's not going to work. PHP app console cache clear by default this uses the dev environment so we can see that straight away we've got this PHP fatal error same thing here that it's telling us that we we can't do this in be, effectively let's if we look at the app kernel and on line 25 which is what it's telling us here on line 25 we need to include this bundle however we only include this bundle so we only register this with our kernel if we're in the dev or the test environment and it, it's going to load this get environment which just returns the current environment and the current environment is determined by default um, to be the um, the dev environment but we can actually specify it so if we say mv equals dev then it's going to throw an error however if we do mv equals prod it goes through fine because obviously when we do this this becomes prod and prod's not in the array so it doesn't actually try and register these bundles, which is the correct way it should be doing, the correct you know sort of outcome. But for some reason, there seems to be this bug. So if you've got a deploy script set up, you're going to encounter this error, but you can safely ignore it. It's just you know who who wants an error when you're going into prod, regardless of whether it's a, a known error or not. Um, but there you go, really. That that's what this is for. So that's composer update, and that's really what you should be using it for. Um, However, I can understand the reasons why, as I just mentioned, you probably wouldn't want to see errors when you're going into prod, especially, you know, if you're in a bigger team or whatever, not everyone might be aware of that. And yeah, it can obviously cause some concern. And But it, that that's that's what you should be using it for. And hopefully you will uh, have learned a little bit more about Composer. And I do fully encourage you to go in there and check out the docs as well, because there is some other stuff in there. And uh, what, the other thing that I find is a lot of people don't fully understand what they're doing with Composer, um, even though you know they use it on a almost day-to-day, -day, if not actually day-to-day -day basis. So, yeah, please do spend a little bit more time reading up on it, but hopefully this has been helpful to you.